I'd like to remind all the witnesses that we need to have uh, the forms filled out, please. Do we have when you're ready, sir? Okay, good afternoon to everyone. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, all of those all of those of you who are, are here today, all my labor friends in the back, especially my CWA members. I'm happy to be here today to speak against this bill. Um, I represent uh, members in Missouri, Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, and Arkansas. About 50,000 union members over those five states. All of those states are right to work, with the exception of Missouri. I serve on the CWA National Executive Board, representing 500,000 plus workers across this country. Uh, I also serve on the Coalition of Black Trade Unionists Board, representing thousands of workers in this country. I serve on the Executive Board of the A. Philip Randolph Institute, representing thousands of workers in this country. I also serve as a member of the Coalition of Labor Union Women, representing women and other workers around this country. And I'm also the Vice President of the NAACP uh, in Houston, Texas. Now, I talk to you and give you all of that information because I want you to know that I'm well versed on right to work. So I'm not just here uh, with someone that's been given a speech just to talk about it. Uh, I've lived it. I know about it, and I know what it can do uh, to workers in the state. Representative Curtis talked about this being Black History Month, so um, why don't we just see what Dr. King had to say about right to work. Dr. King, in 1961, said, In our glorious fight for civil rights, we must guard against being fooled by false slogans such as right to work. It is a law to rob us of our civil rights and our job rights. Its purpose is to destroy labor unions and freedom of collective bargaining by which unions have improved wages and working conditions of everybody. Wherever these laws have passed, wages are lower, job opportunities are fewer, and there are no civil rights. He also goes on to say, we do not intend to let them do this to us. We demand this fraud be stopped. Our weapon is our vote. So again, since it's Black History Month, let's talk about what the NAACP has to say, the leading organization for civil rights in this country. This resolution was passed in 2013. Whereas the NAACP has passed numerous resolutions advocating on behalf of worker rights for over 60 years, Therefore, be it resolved that the NAACP advocates for the repeal of all so-called right-to-work laws that have been enacted and opposed all that are being considered by local, state, or federal legislature. And be it further resolved that the NAACP reiterates its strong support for all workers to collectively bargain for their wages, benefits, working conditions, and other rights. And be it finally resolved that the NAACP recognizing that workers' rights are civil rights is committed to working in coordination with other like-minded individuals, organizations, and groups which may be opposed to so-called right-to-work laws either through political, legal, or other advocacy means. Now that's what one of the leading civil rights um, uh, uh, people, person had to say in Dr. King and also the NAACP, the, the of the civil rights organization, the largest civil rights organization in this country. So I sit before you today understanding clearly that there is work to be done between the building trades and the African American community to make sure there is more opportunities for work in the building trades on, construct on construction projects. However, a work to, uh, a right to work law will not do that. I'm also sure Representative Cortez Bill 582 is filed to try and bring more attention to the fact that more, not less, needs to be done to ensure more participation of African American and other minorities in construction work in Missouri. But a right to work bill would not do that. The bill as filed advocates the building trades unions. However, all in this hearing must understand clearly that in the labor movement, we have a motto that is true. An injury to one is an injury to all. This bill in the end 
will adversely affect all working people and will lead to lower wages and drive down the overall living standards in communities. And as Dr. King said so eloquently, all unions will come together to stop it. So I will make a few points and go back to my seat. First of all, a right to work bill will not ensure more work to minority contractors or anyone else. It will not give minority contractors any advantage, but it will bring in large out of state construction companies that have no investment in Missouri and will also bring their low wage earners with them. It will also hurt state workers and hurt the communities they serve with poor service. Number two, the facts are in right to work states, construction workers have a much higher level of workplace injury and fatalities, and again, much lower average wages than Missouri workers. Number three, in other right to work states, minority contractors still have to fight for a fair share of federal or private contracts, so right to work will not help with that problem that's here. Number four, the labor movement is the largest provider of construction and other skills training in this country other than the U.S. military. Without organized building trades or other unions, Missouri contractors' ability to find skilled trade workers will be devastating. However, large contractors that have been waiting for years at your borders for right to work to pass will crowd the state with low skill and cheap, la cheap labor wage earners. Number five, right to work laws will hurt workers in every union and every race and every gender in this state. Mm -hmm. Finally, I understand clearly, very clearly, that there is work to be done to include more minority workers in all industries, not just the building trades. However, right to work won't be good for any of Missouri's workers or its small minority businesses or any other industry. All it will do is take away workers' voices, reduce income of families, destroy communities, lower the standard of living, ensure there will be more injuries due to poor training, and hurt small minority businesses. It will destroy the middle class in Missouri. Right to work is not good for Missouri. It is not good for the workers in Missouri. Thank you. One other thing I will say, I'm one of the largest employers in this state, AT&T has gone on record as opposing right to work. So I want to make sure that you all know that too. And one other comment I'll say, um, when you have an issue like this, you don't throw out the baby with the wash. You sit down, cool heads need to talk through it, uh, I understand clearly, again, there's an issue with the building trades in the African-American community, but right to work is not going to fix it. We need people with cool heads to sit down in a meeting and work through it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, Representative Hoskins. Go ahead. I don't think my, my microphone's working, so we'll just... Uh, here we go. Thank you. Thank you for testimony, uh, gentlemen. I, I had uh, just two questions. What, what, what percentage of the building trade unions in Missouri are minority? I don't know. I don't, I, I, I don't have a clue, and to be quite honest with you, uh, that's not that important to I me. Mean, you know, that's, that's for, for them to work out. You know, the problem is, whatever the percentage is, a right to work law is not going to fix it. Okay, well, I, I see you said you don't know and you don't care, right. but you've also just get some testimony that you said there should be more minority um, owned businesses and more minority opportunities so I, that's correct it's, yeah it's kind of well, I don't care but I want it so I, it's kind of two different things and then but if I, if I may explain what I'm saying is I don't care about the, the numbers because the numbers is not going to it's not going to fix the right to work if right to work is not going to fix the numbers period regardless of what the numbers are the okay. right to work is not well then I, it, yes. I guess it it just means that your testimony where you talked about that didn't it didn't apply to this right to work anyway so I'm not for, quite for sure then why you would bring it up if you want to talk about it now and then the second thing question I had is you mentioned that right to work violates uh, civil rights would you elaborate that a little bit to me I'd, I'd like to hear your sure thoughts. sure well what, what right to work will do is it will uh, not afford the opportunity to have 
for minorities to have a voice on the job. Right now, in many states where there are not unions, minorities do not have a voice on the job. Their civil rights, their equal rights, their wage rights are being violated. Having a strong, closed shop state makes sure that there's equality when it comes to working conditions, it makes sure there's equality when it comes to wages, it makes sure there's equality when it comes to working conditions and civil rights. Well, I, I guess I'd have to disagree with you. And I, you know, I, I think well, that's fine. we have some strong uh, minority state reps and, and state senators here, and uh, I, I put them up with, you know, non-minority uh, state reps and, and state senators. So yeah, I well, I will take I you back to the statement you. I said yeah. initially. I'm not just from Missouri. I represent four of the states that are right to work, and I know what happens in those states. Mm -hmm. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for your testimony. Um, the representative that uh, has offered this bill, he and I were elected at the same time, and uh, we're both sophomores in the legislature. And I know him to be very sincere and very dedicated to try to work to make his district better, as I am to try to make my district better. Uh, you said that this was not a solution to the problems that he's trying to address then what are the solutions to the problems that he's trying to address? Right, I think that they need to sit down in a room and work through it. Simple, really? simple as that. And I don't, and I don't, and I don't, you know, I don't know that that's been done. I'm not talking about in this room. I'm talking about outside this room. You know, this fight uh, between the building trades and the African American community or, or, or a minority contractors that shouldn't that fight shouldn't be held here. That discussion needs to be held outside this room. You don't destroy all workers because one segment of labor has got a problem with the community. That's not what Dr. King meant when he made that statement. That's, how, that's not how communities work through issues. We don't try to hurt people in the community. You don't try to destroy the middle class. You sit in the room and you try to work through those issues. This is ridiculous. I can't ever remember a time in my life when, when, when you had labor and African-American community that couldn't work through an issue like this. This is ridiculous. I've been involved in the, in the labor movement for over 40 years. And this is absolutely ridiculous that you have two segments of the community that have, that have worked so strongly together over the years that came together when Dr. King marched on Washington, D.C. And other, and other places. Those two communities worked together. They didn't work against each other like what's taking place in here today. There needs to be, there needs to be cooler heads, to get in a meeting somewhere and work through it. And I believe that that's done, because believe me, there are a lot of people that look like me in positions with authority and influence. And if we could all sit down in a room together, different unions with the community and the building trades, I truly believe we can work through it. But one thing I know for sure, a right to work bill is not going to fix it. It's going to hurt other unions. And it's going to hurt the state of Missouri. You got Republican legislators here, Democratic legislators here. It ain't a Republican and legislative, a, a Republican legislator issue or a Democratic legislative issue. It's a Missouri issue, and it's going to hurt the state. It's going to hurt the standard of living. It's going to destroy the middle class. It's going to destroy communities if right to work is passed. And again, take it from someone who represents four states that are right to work, and I know what I have to fight for every day in those states, and it's not easy. Okay. Now, do you say there's no discrimination between the minority population and the building trades unions? Is, are there, is there discrimination being done now, you think? I mean, that's what the representative indicates. So, if there is discrimination, why would you want to yeah, let me, support let, that? Let, let, let me say this again. No one is going to pull me into a fight against the building trades and the African-American community. What I'm telling you is I understand clearly, I don't live in Missouri, you guys do. I understand though that there's an issue between those two communities. I'm here strictly to talk about right to work and the impact that it can have on the community, the middle class, all working people in all segments of society and the state of Missouri. It will hurt everybody if a right to work bill is passed. The fight that those two groups are having, uh, they need to sit down again and try to work that out. And as I stated in my last statement, throwing the baby out with the wash by making this a right to work bill, our state is not going to fix the issue. 
for the, for, it is not. As a matter of fact, it will make it worse because as I stated earlier, on the borders of Missouri, I guarantee you, you've got large contractors that have no investment in Missouri that are going to bring in low-wage workers to do that work. Do you think that they're going to give work to minority contractors here? I can tell you, they ain't. It ain't going to happen. So this is a little bit bigger issue than just St. Louis or Missouri. This is kind of a national issue. I'm not saying that because I haven't been called to talk from anywhere else. I mean, that's yes. kind of what you just said or right. way I understood it. Um, but anyway, I appreciate your testimony and uh, hopefully, just how could you get everybody together in a room outside here? Because we brought everybody in here today and that's, that's, a, that's a good beginning. Well, you know, I just think it's, uh, a, a meeting should have been held in some form before. Why that hasn't happened, I don't have a clue. Okay. To be quite honest with you, I don't. Thank you. Yeah. Representative Burns, and I'm, I want to remind you guys all again, uh, and I have no objection to an anyone asking questions, but please ask a question and let it be answered. Um, we've got 35 people to testify before we leave here today. Okay, uh, Mr. Mitchell, I was just going to say, I would say, I, you know, I don't know that people haven't, haven't tried to meet, but uh, uh, if they have, it didn't come any good. And I know the right to work is not going to fix what the issue is. Mr. Yes. Chairman, will you also please exercise that authority and people who are testifying to keep them on track? Appreciate it. Uh, permission to inquire? Yes. Uh, thank you for being here, and uh, I'm aware of the work that your union does. And I realize that your union is not under an apprentice program or training, just like my union, the Teamsters, is not. Right. You're trained by your fellow workers or schooling that the, the companies or that right. may send you to. What did you say the number of people that you represent, that your union represents? I represent in this part of the country over 50,000. 50,000. Yeah. Totally the CWA, what would you say? Close to 700,000. 700,000. How many minorities are in your union. Do you have any idea? Not off the top of my head, but but, uh, but quite a few. Quite a few. Yes, sir, quite a few. Uh, I'll be interested. As a matter of fact, you work through the, the call centers here. I think sure. you see a good representation of African Americans. Well, that's the point is, and I'm not sure the minority community percentage in the United States, but I would assume that your percentage is probably larger than that percentage. That's correct. Okay. The other issue is, in the building, I'll be anxious to hear the building trades, particularly in our state, how many minorities are involved? How many minorities have been through the, the um, apprentice programs? In this, as you said, minorities rise up in places of leadership just like you. Right. Now, when you do that, you're elected by your fellow union members. Or women are men union members. Is that not true? That's correct. Okay. So you have to be there all the time. They know you're conscientious, you get elected to your position. That's correct. And if you don't do a job that's good for these members of 50,000 that you represent, you get voted out of office. That's Just correct. like one of us up here. That's correct. Based, right? But the other issue is, um, there were some things brought up about strong arm tactics. Uh, I know your union doesn't use that. No. My union doesn't use that because it's against federal law. That's correct. The other issue is, there was something was brought up about it was published that on a certain building project or a project that they were not going to use minorities in the first round. That's against the law. Is that I not true? That's discrimination. That's against discrimination the law. is right. against the law of the Civil Rights Act of 1965. Right. Is that not true? That's correct. So who is going to violate your union, my union, certainly not, particularly after we had three federal judges over our union appointed by the first George Bush. Since the 80s, we got a clean bill of health. They've been there, no findings, and now we got the clean bill of health. Nobody's going to violate federal law because you know if you do, you're going to be hauled into federal court and some union official is going to go to jail. That's correct. That's true? That's true. Thank you very much for being here. I don't have my right. One other thing, thing I might say, uh, the majority of delegates that voted for me were white when I was elected to this position. Amen. <coughs> Representative Dorman. To inquire, Mr. Chairman. Go ahead. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, did did I correctly hear you say? And tell me if I'm wrong. But I believe you made the statement that right to work would destroy the middle class. Yes, sir. I do believe that. And, and what states do you represent? Uh, Texas, uh, uh, Arkansas, Kansas, 
in Oklahoma. Okay. I was just looking at a, a, at a chart here, per capita income in a five-year period. Um, up in Oklahoma and Arkansas, about $5,000. Missouri, it was about 3500 at the same time. Missouri is not a right-to-work state, correct? That's correct. Um, I just wanted to point that out. Yeah, and you, can, you. You, can, yeah, you can point that Thank out. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. All right. I mean, I, I mean, I don't know. I don't know your point because you'd have to look at the demographics of those workers too to see how much they're getting paid. So, just to just to clarify, you made a broad, generalized statement that one piece of legislation was going to destroy the middle class, and I've heard that, I've heard it, and I heard it. Uh, first of all, what is the middle class? Is the middle class today what it was 70 years ago? Those sorts of things. My point is, my point is, we can generalize all day long. That doesn't necessarily mean that it's is supported by facts. Yeah. Well, we'll we'll you know we'll we'll disagree on that because what I can tell you is that I believe the standard of living for workers in this country 25 and 30 years ago was larger because there were there were a high percentage that, of you workers. You were allowed that opinion. Right. And that's what I understand that. But I also lived it because I've been involved in this for over 40 years. You're not going to tell me with the private sector being organized, it's only 6%, the public sector, the 11%, that the middle class is better off now than it was 30 years ago, the, when it was over 30% organized. And that's labor. all due to right to work? Uh, yes. All due to right to yes. work? Can you prove yes. that? Yes. No, no, I can't prove that now prove because it? I'm not here to talk about that. But I tell you what, I'll come back and I'll prove it and sit down and talk with you about it. I'll bring the facts. I, I think there are a lot of factors that feed yeah. into that. All right. Representative Gosman. Gentlemen, a couple of times you mentioned this hearing being ridiculous. You know, when I have a friend and a colleague bring a bill up here on an issue that I've, I've invited people into my office the last 36 hours, maybe people in this room to explain and try to understand this issue better to me, because I don't understand the labor issue real well. I've worked very hard, and this friend and colleague of mine has a concern. To me, that's not ridiculous at all. It's very important that it's something we need to deal with, why do you think it's ridiculous? Okay, so I didn't say that this hearing was ridiculous. So let's, let's make sure this bill no, no, is no, 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 that's not what I said. What I said was, it's ridiculous that we have to come here to have this type of fight that it should have been held before we got here. That's That was my point. You know, I did not say anything was ridiculous about this. This is the way things work. They work in other states. I've testified in other states before. No, it's not ridiculous. He said he's tried to here. talk to people and no one would talk to him. So maybe this isn't that ridiculous. Well, I, and I don't. I don't think that. this is ridiculous at all. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Well, I didn't say this hearing was ridiculous. What I said was it's ridiculous that the issue couldn't be worked out before we got here. So I can clarify that for the record. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, sir. Okay. Thank you so very much. Uh, Reverend, is it Polito? 